What's up, YouTube? Today, I have one of the best high-flying wrestlers in the business right now, and he might be climbing that ladder to win the MLW National Open Weight Championship at War Chamber. This is the aerial artist, Zenshi. What's up, man? What's up, Malcolm? You know, I gotta stop you right there. You know, you look like a nice guy. You, you look like someone I want to like, but hey, you can't introduce the aerial artiste as a high flyer. <laughs> oh. I'm I sorry am the that. one and only aerial artist. I'm not just a regular high flyer. Those guys that doing the flippy dippy doos. Nah, I'm on another level, Malcolm. And it's gonna be me. It's gonna be the aerial artist. Then she climbing that ladder. Or, you know what? Screw it. Maybe I won't even use the ladder. You know, I was in a ladder match once against a guy named A.R. Fox. You heard of him? Yeah, I've heard of him, yeah. I won that match without the ladder. You know what? Since she doesn't even need the ladder, Malcolm, I'm going to be the next open weight champ. But uh, I need to calm down because this is your show, not the Zinchi show. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just, I just absolutely love the energy. So uh, you're saying you're just gonna jump up there and just grab it? Well, you know what? I might as well try. <laughs> I don't I think mean, anyone is gonna expect it. You know what I'm saying? We gotta go grab the ladder, good. set it up, knock this guy out, knock this guy out. You know, it might be a little anticlimactic. <laughs> I can just jump up and jump up on that bitch. I might even, I might try it. I might try it. You never know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to see it. I mean, you got a lot of really, really strong opponents in front of you coming up because you're face off against Myron Reed, Alex Shelley, Alex Kane in a wild card because, like, th those are some, those are impressive names. So how do you think you're going to win that ladder match? Definitely. It's kind of crazy, too, because, like, all bets are off. Anybody could win this match. And you look at the cards. A lot of ma ladder matches you see, Money in the Banks and stuff like that, you look at it and be like, look, that person's definitely not winning. That person <laughs> couldn't possibly win. That person, you're like, okay, maybe it's down to him and him. I, I look at the uh, the roster for, for this match, and I'm like, man, it's anybody's guess here. Of course, yeah. I'm going me, but, you know, you can't count out the suplex assassin, Alex Kane. You know, I trained with Alex Kane. I was just training with him tonight. I'm, to be honest, I think, uh, you know, when you train with someone, you, you also have to fight later on in the week. You know, they get a little attitude here and there. You know, we, <laughs> we're kind of holding our our secrets close to the chest, but hey, we're still bros. So you got Alex Kane, you got Alex Shelley, one half of the Motor City Machine Guns, a legend when it comes to this game. He could win any match. You got the young goat, Myron Reed, the first two-time middleweight champion in, you know, in, in MLW history. Who else? Who else? Who am I missing? And then you've got, of course, the wild card. Yeah. It'll be crazy. Don't miss it. Yeah, no, I mean, it sounds like a crazy match. And like you said earlier that you have a different style from all these other guys from High Flying Moves. So who exactly is Zenshi? Zenshi, Zenshi, you know, Zenshi means complete history. It means uh, it means I'm much more of a complete performer than I've ever been in any point in my career. You know, this is almost 12 years in for me, which is crazy to even say, because to me, I'm still just learning. I'm still a student, you know, I'm still, I feel like I'm four, year, four years in, you know, I'm just getting my big break, I'm just getting better. I'm getting better every time, you know, I'm still going to training. Like I said, I appreciate you moving this meeting 30 minutes later, just because <laughs> it was a good day of training, you know? Um, yeah. But by 12 years in, you know, I've really been able to refine my craft and, you know, refine just what I'm good at, you know, what is it that I bring to the table? Um, and, and I've been working on that, you know? There, there's some th there's some moves I'm just not good at shooting stars from the top <laughs> rope. I can do it. I can do it with a full twist. I can do it with a double twist. I just not comfortable with those. So I do it in a different way. I do it in my style. I do it running shooters. I do it off the apron. I do it off one foot. For some reason, I leave the two feet to the people like Seidel and Mark Quinn. You know, I stay in my lane, but I feel like my lane is pretty freaking unique. No. Yeah, it most definitely is. I've been watching a lot of your matches recently, just trying to catch up on my history as Enchi. So, like, when I'm talking about, like, your history and your complete history, what is, like, your path in professional wrestling? Like, what's your start to leading up to now in MLW? Oh, crazy. I don't know if we have time for all of that, but I'll <laughs> give you the bullet points. You know, um, as a kid, I, you know, was a gym, uh, a gymnast, a competitive gymnast. Um, and went all the way up to level tell. 9, training for tell. level 10, which is the highest you can go as a kid before you decide whether you're going to go to college for this or do it professionally. And, you know, yeah. my path was to go all the way to the Olympics, but at one point, that was the daily grind. So that's where I got my, uh, my, my, I guess my ability, my physical ability was training every day, hours and hours and hours in the gym. Um, and then after kind of uh, the love for that kind of fizzled down, in comes pro wrestling. I was in a pizza parlor one day, 
and uh, just waiting for my pizza. And it was Friday. What happens on Friday nights, Malcolm? I don't know about anymore, but what ha- what used to happen on Friday night? I mean, like you party, you watch SmackDown, uh, you know, just the oh, usual. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Friday night SmackDown. In comes Eminem. You got Nitro and Mercury and this bad Marina. I was like, whoa! I'm like 12 <laughs> years old. I'm like, I'm not allowed to watch this. Am I like uh, <laughs> any minute now? Some adults could be like, you gotta turn your head, you know. But I wasn't with Mama, so I'm sitting there watching the split. Boom, boom, boom. You see Batista <laughs> coming. Out, rah, rah, I have muscles. I'm like, okay. And then after that, you see this guy with a mask on, just like flipping on everyone's heads and doing yep. backflips. And I'm like, that guy is freaking dope. <laughs> and that's where it got reignited. That's where uh, the love for this definitely, uh, you know, sparked. I became a closet wrestling fan from that moment on. Um, you know, <laughs> I didn't have many. There wasn't many people like me. Wrestling wasn't cool at that time. You know. But uh, I couldn't get enough of the SmackDown thing, you know? And eventually I got cable and eventually I started watching Raw and eventually I couldn't miss a pay-per-view. And eventually I said, I gotta try this. I gotta try it, you know? I got the physical ability. I can't, uh, you know, I couldn't, I, I can't regret not trying this. So that's when I was looking up schools and that was the path in. Well, it's definitely. So like, what's your path to like leading to signing with MLW? Because like, I would assume this is probably like one of your biggest breaks in pro wrestling right now. Obviously you worked in Impact Wrestling. You've had a match against like Jeff Hardy and stuff. So like, what's your goal or what's like your path of leading to MLW? MLW is very interesting. Um, so this was around, uh, this was 2019 um, once I signed with MLW. And uh, really, here, here's what happened. One day I looked at my phone and my phone has a thing where it'll, if I get a voicemail, it'll yeah. transcribe it to English. You know, yeah, it does a bad job, but it, it'll kind of <laughs> give me the cliff note. I don't know if you check your voicemail, but it's 2020. Well, it was 2019. I don't check my voicemail. Like if you leave me a voicemail, I didn't get it, right? Yeah, yeah, not so bad. I don't know what possessed me that day to swipe over to the voicemail side. Maybe I'm like, yeah. okay, I'll do my yearly check of my skim of my voicemail transcription. I do that and I see this one that's like, blah, 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 call me, yeah, looking for, yeah, uh huh, like, okay, and then no, you guys, where are you? And I'm like, who is this? These telemarketers, man. So then I scroll down a little bit, and a month prior, there's another one that's similar, and but it said wrestling, and you know, and I'm like, all right, I gotta listen to it now. And I, and I answer it, and uh, it's Teddy Hart. Teddy Hart who left me two voicemails. One, a month apart, one be, a whole month before this, and then one a few days before this. And I'm like, yo, basically he's like, I don't know if you dropped off the face of the earth. I can't find you, I'm looking for you. I know that I'm with this, comp- I'm with this company now, and, uh, and uh, I wanna get you in. Call me back, call me back, call me back. So I called him back and I was like, what's up, Teddy? Long time, he's like, where have you been? Like, <laughs> all right, you gotta email these guys right now, right now. And he sends me the contact MLW and says they're expecting you. And I hit him up and they're like, hey, you Teddy's guy. And from there, you know, it was only about a week of, uh, of talking some specifics and I was announced at their next event. Wow, wow, I, that's a definitely a different story. If you had never swiped over, you might've never even like yeah, noticed that probably, MLW yeah, was hitting you up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, things happen for a reason. Like maybe eventually it would have been a, it a different path, but like that's yeah. literally how it happened. Like how crazy is that? <laughs> Absolutely insane. I mean, like that's definitely fate without doubt. Easy. For sure, for sure. And Teddy Hart's kind of crazy. I had met him. Well, of course, he's kind of crazy. Everybody knows he's crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had met him the first time I met Teddy Hart. You guys tell the story. Okay. Um, with Chikara. I don't know if you're familiar with the Chikara Pro. No, of, of, of course, of course. Of course, right? So it was the Ray DeValadores tournament that the that I won the tournament. I beat the great Sonata in the finals. I got. I finally got my due in Chikara, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember walking to the back and I'm all like out of breath. I got the mist still trying to get it out of my eyes. And <laughs> I lay down in the, the locker room and of course there's a lot of people whatever. But I noticed someone just walks up and puts a chair down like right by my head. I'm, I'm like this. And sits down and I just like look up. And then here comes this, this figure in this purple suit, this fur, mink, mink fur coat. He's got the hat with the feather. He's got three chains on. He's got this 
fat, fat giant cat named Mr. Wow, Money. There it is. <laughs> and he's just stroking like this. I'm telling you, it was a scene out of a Disney movie. I'm looking up and I'm just like, who, what in the F is going on? I'm like, looking around and I see people in the back of the locker room, like looking over, they're, they're, they're doing their thing, trying not to be caught being nosy, but they're looking over like, is that freaking Teddy Hart? Why is he here? And why is he staring at the time Shenron down right there? And I vaguely was like, hey, and he was like, hey man, you're one of the best ever. You're one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, I came down just to watch your match. I, I was in a show, this was in Pennsylvania. He was like, yeah, I did a show in Jersey. I heard you were here. So I was like, yeah, I gotta meet you. Gotta meet you. Yeah, you're one of the best. You're one of the best, man. Yeah, great job out there. Good shit, good shit. Hey, 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 I got this stuff. I got this plan. I got this plan. I got this wrestling pro. And he starts talking what sounds like conspiracy theories and all kinds <laughs> of stuff. And he's saying that the, the world is owned by a few, uh, whatever. I can't even get into all of it. But the point is, he's saying, I got this big project and I'm scouting people for it and I wanted to get your name and the, the exchange info and that was that. I thought he was crazy. It turned out that project he was talking about was Lucha Underground. Oh, okay, wow. But, wow. And for whatever reason, we missed the contacting each other and stuff after that and we never ended up solidifying things. Um, so I probably missed the boat on Lucha Underground from there. But later down the, down the line, it came back full circle with MLW. You know. Yeah, of course, of course. And I also want to mention also that you did wrestle for Impact Wrestling at one point against Jeff Hardy. How was it being in a ring with such like an icon? Dude, that was another crazy story that kind yeah. of shouldn't have happened, but it did. I don't know if we got a lot of time, but I got to tell no, you. No, I'd rather you say it. That's, that's amazing. Great, great, great. So before we get into that story, okay, I was going to say we have to back up, but we got to address the elephant in the room. Malcolm, okay. I, I know you wanted to talk about that injury, you know, that incident. Yeah. Yeah, the only yeah, reason so I bring it up because it's important. It leads into the Matt Hardy story that leads into the Jeff Hardy story. And I'll right, try right. to go quick. Well, all right, so I guess we'll, we'll, tap, we'll tap, um, go ahead and touch on that really quickly. So it was a video that happened about uh, about nine years ago, about a decade ago, that a lot of wrestling fans, I'm sure you've probably seen it before. I know I've seen it more than a, a few times. I honestly didn't make the connection until like maybe in the last two or three weeks that I was the same oh, no. wrestler. Yeah, I had no idea until recently. Um, yeah, uh, talk to me, talk through that moment if you can. Like, that was an incredibly no, no. so you know, about two and a half years in my wrestling career, I'm a young, maybe a little less, two, two years of my wrestling career, I'm a you know, young, promising high flyer that didn't really know what he was doing. Um, you know, mind you, I was, I was a professional almost professional gymnast now. I can yeah. I can do all the high flying stuff in my sleep. But when it comes to the wrestling ring at the time, I didn't know how to really wrestle yet. You know, that was yeah. only, so I'll say definitely, I was a high, a high flyer. Um, anyway, um, there was an incident, there was a show where I went for this big death defying move, a move that only maybe three people on the planet have hit successfully before that. But of course, me thinking I, I'm invincible and I can do anything, I go for this move. Now, mind you, there's 40 people in the crowd. I did not need to go for this move. It was too big. But to me, it was my WrestleMania moment, Malcolm. I had to do it. I had to reach up and grab the brass ring. I had to become the world heavyweight champion in front of 43 people in Rhode Island. So I had the best match I could. I got to the top rope. I knocked my opponent down. And for some reason, and this, I'm not a particularly a religious guy, but I did the whole cross my chest, Hail Mary thing. Almost like this was destined, like it was destined to happen what was happening next. And I go up and I'm flipping and I'm flipping and I open up for my glory to land on the guy. And <laughs> I land right on my head, dude. It was yeah. Awful. It was awful. Yeah. Like, people see it. They're like, oh my God. Definitely should have been dead. At the very least, I should have been paralyzed. It was that bad. It was so bad that it ended up going viral all across the pro wrestling world. It ended up going viral all across the whole world. Ridiculousness. Tosh.0, world's dumbest. It's been everywhere. Random shows in Japan I still haven't gotten paid for. It's been everywhere. Fast forward. Okay, one of the only people to reach, well, one of the people that reached out to me during that time when I was recovering was Matt Hardy, who happens to yeah. be my second favorite wrestler of all time because my first favorite is Great Mysterio. Yeah. Um, he reached out on Twitter and he was like, yo, this dude, you know, has heart. He survived. He even kicked out. Like, that's crazy. He's definitely stronger yeah. than you. I almost no, cried. The, the kick out when I that happened, it. I was like, wow, this dude, 
Like, even though he might have actually just gotten paralyzed, he really okay. just kicked out after that. I'm like, yo, like, I, I don't care what all these people are saying. Like, this guy is amazing. Like, who I would not he, even bother even standing up after. Like, kudos. Kudos. <laughs> The weakest kick out you've ever seen, but hey, that's all I had left. And I got I mean, my shoulder yeah. up, so technically it counts. It counts. No, it counted. No, it definitely counts. I don't care how weak it was. I mean, yeah, in that moment, I think any kick out wouldn't be the strongest in the world. Yo, so so Matt reached out, basically said, good luck. Hey, this guy is definitely stronger than death. Which, side note, almost made me cry, because as a high schooler, I didn't have no money. But Matt was one of my favorites. When he was going through this whole, like, you know, I can't slap, but like he was... Yeah. You know, being buried as far as booking goes, but he was still out there putting on the best matches and, and really, you know, defying that, that trend. And, and I felt him, you know, I felt that. I would make my own Matt Hardy t-shirts with Sharpies because <laughs> I didn't have it. And here he's acknowledging this guy is like stronger than death. That was huge for confidence in my career. Okay, fast forward a little bit later, 2016, actually quite a few years later. I wake up one day and I look at my Twitter and I'm booked in a match against Matt Hardy at Dreamwave Wrestling in Illinois in an indie show. And I, my, I, I'm like, am I looking at this right? I'm like, yo, yo, who's in, who's in this picture? He's like, Matt Hardy. Who's in this picture? You. I go to someone else. Like it was crazy. I was booked. So we had this match, and I it was I was an out of body experience. You know, I'm in the ring and he's walking to the ring and the music and I'm like, oh shit. He's coming for me. You know what I mean? He does this whole thing at me. He's about to kick my ass. And I'm like, oh shit. He's about to kick my ass. No, I gotta kick his ass. But I can't kick his ass. I love him. And he's, you know, I'm gonna kick your ass. And I'm like, well, well, we're gonna kick each other's ass. So we kick each other's ass, right? So then the, so the match is done. We're in the elevator after freshly kicking each other's asses. We get out of the elevator and uh, we're, you know, saying how much we enjoyed the match and, and I just thank him and he says, oh, thank you for the match. And I said, you know what? It's, it's extra special to me, Matt, because not only did I get to wrestle you and you're pretty cool, but you know, because you're one of the guys that reached out to me back then and I kind of blah, blah, and he just stopped. He just looked and you could see his mind like calculating and, and trying to put things together. And he looked at me and he said, wait a minute, you're the guy? And I was like, yeah. He was like, this whole time, I had no idea you were the same, the same guy who, you know, and his mind was blown. So he's just like, yo, I'll give you my info, blah, blah, blah. Impact Wrestling is having a taping soon. Hit me up and maybe, maybe we can make something happen. So Matt Hardy hooked me up with Impact Wrestling. Okay, fast forward to the next year, 2016. I show up to Impact Wrestling looking for an opportunity. I'm doing the ring crew. I'm setting up the ring. I'm doing anything I can. I'm seeing a lot of people that I know on the roster. I'm seeing a lot of people I know that are there for tryout matches or whatever. And I'm one of the only ones doing ring crew and stuff. Um, I think that made me look good. A lot of the other people were like, why are you doing that? Like, you know, <laughs> you're, you're way too advanced for this. I'm like, no, I don't got no ego. Like, you know, I'm, I'm here enjoying the show. So the first day I do ring crew, everything's good. Eating catering, it's awesome. Hanging out with Austin Kong, Matt Hardy, Kurt Angle. It's, it's a dream come true already. Yeah. Second day comes, I'm over by Ring Crew. There's a lot of dead time. You know, we're just sitting around. You know, we got a lot of time before the show. Matt comes in and he, he looks around kind of frantically, like he's looking for something. And he sees me standing over by the ring. And he comes over and he's like, hey man, can I holler at you for a second? And I'm like, sure. So he brings me over. I thought we we're going to do it. He brings me over to like the far side of the arena, like by the bleachers. I'm like, there's nothing here. And he's like, hey man, so here's the deal. Jeff is here. Now at the time, Jeff Hardy was injured. He had a really bad knee injury from a, uh, a motor motorcycle accident. And he was yeah. still like four months away from even being in physical therapy. He should not have been in the ring, right? But it was a big, it was the Axis TV. I think it was Axis TV uh, or something. Not Axis TV. It was a big debut, new network. It was a big deal that night, right? And uh, Jeff was wanted to wrestle really bad. And the office was shutting him down hard. They're like, too big of a liability. So Matt was like, hey, so we're trying to convince him. And, um, you know, and, and I, I told him we had a really good guy for him to work that's really safe that, you know, and I kind of lied a little bit. I, I said, you're friends with him and you've wrestled him all your life and you know what you're doing. So, you know, would you mind like doing a little match with Hardy? Like, you know, he'll he'll probably beat you have with Quant on you laugh. But, you know, you know, would you mind? And I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll wrestle Hardy and I'll show you, I'll, I'll beat him. I'll kick his ass, right? So then he's like, thanks, I appreciate it. So we go on the Jeff Hardy hunt. Hardy's 
Jeff Hardy's the hardest person to find at a wrestling show, by the way. You don't never know where the guy is. <laughs> Thing might be a little harder, to be honest. But we're looking at every door, blah, blah, blah. We can't find Hardy. Finally, we're like, I don't know where he went. We turn around, he's right there. I'm like, you weren't just there a second ago. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so I, I need Hardy basically <laughs> for the first time that, you know, in that instance. And, um, and I shake his hand. He's like, hey, hey. And as soon as that happens, Bob Ryder, rest his soul, comes in. He's the talent relations guy. Passed away. Great guy. But he comes in and he looks at me and he's sort of familiar with me a little bit. Because yeah. there's these guys on Twitter for a whole year that have been yelling at him to sign me. Isn't she for TNA and all that, whatever, like two guys. So I had two fans, apparently. He sees me. Oh, you're the Zinchi for TNA guy. He sees Matt. He sees me and Jeff who are shaking hands. And he's like, he's the guy. And Matt and Jeff was like, yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy. He's like, and he looks at me. He's like, you know these guys? And I'm like, yeah, I know them. And Matt's like, yeah, we're all friends. We're, we're friends. We've known each other for a long time. And Ryder knows something is up. He's like, okay, fine. This is the match. And he walks away. And we're like, yes. <laughs> so that's how the match with Jeff Hardy and BK. Hurricane Helms was our agent, which was another mind-blowing thing because another guy wow. I love. Wow. And uh, and that was that. Kurt Angle said I did it. Even though I got my ass kicked, Kurt Angle said I did a great job. That's all I needed to hear. You know, great experience. Wow. <laughs> now that, that's, that's a story I did not expect I was going to hear. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, like, the last thing I really want to touch on is, like, what's your end goals now being in MLW, possibly winning that National Open Point Championship? What's, like, the end goal for this whole complete history of Zenshi? To put some respect in my name, you know? Hell yeah. For too long. <laughs> for too long, the every artist has been out there stealing shows, taking names, kicking asses, sometimes getting his ass kicked, you know? And I'm, I have no complaints. I've, I've had such a fun, trans, uh, transformative time in my wrestling career. Um, but at this point, it's time to get the bag. At this oh, point, yeah. it's time to get some, some more hardware. At this point, it's time to get that respect. You know what I'm saying? 12 years, I was thinking, that is a long time. I'm like, I'm not, I need these, I need these accolades. You know, I need it for my for my soul. Not really, not really. I'm I'm so I'm so happy. But as far as uh, you know, a comp in the competitive spirit, it starts this Saturday in the ladder match for the open weight championship. And then after that, we'll take it from there. You know, there's a lot of opportunities in the wrestling world, you know, major league wrestling. I'm having a great time with, you know, uh, you know, you got all elite wrestling out there. It's making waves continuously. You know, I, I never saw myself going to WWE and just never, after I got into the business after a few years, I'm like, nah, like that's just, I don't think that's me. You know, I think, think uh, I, I need a lot more freedom than the average person. And, uh, you know, bless bless anyone that's there. And I got a lot of friends there. You know, it's changed their life, and they're they're happy and doing a great job. A lot of people that are miserable, and have left, or who are still there and miserable and wondering how to get out. Um, but uh, but it's there. Um, you know, what I want to do, especially over the next couple of years, is keep going into South America and keep going into new countries. In fact, Malcolm, I'm going to break the news right now. It just got announced last Sunday. Okay. Then she's debuting in Bolivia. Wow. Okay. In November. In November. Nice. That's pretty awesome. That's so cool. That's so Can't cool. Can't be a shit So I do have an opportunity to grab some some more hardware. So I could yeah. I could be looking at ZC three belts by December. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think I think it's possible. I think it's possible. So uh, where can everyone find you on social media if they're not already following you already? You gotta check me out. Mostly on mostly active on Instagram at the Aerial Artist. Also on Twitter at the Aerial Artist or Facebook at the Aerial Artist. Or you can search Zenshi on Facebook. Also, please check out my uh, you know my new my new baby Lucha Wear. It's www.luchaware.art. Um, it's a really if I could touch on this, Malcolm. I you ahead, know I don't know ahead. if we're, we're almost out of time, but no, you're fine. Go ahead. Pandemic, you know there wasn't a whole lot of wrestling going on. Um, and uh, we had to figure out something, uh, how, to, how to keep moving forward. And in a nutshell, if you live somewhere like America, Japan, UK, there's plenty of wrestling opportunities around you. If you want to train to be a wrestler, there's a school for you. If you're a fan, there's a show for you to go to. If you're a promoter, there's an ecosystem for you to create a wrestling show. But if you live in a place like Zimbabwe, Bolivia, you know, Paraguay, there are way less opportunities. There might be one school. There might be zero schools. You know, it's uh, the opportunities aren't quite there. So 
looking at this issue and also taking trips to South America and meeting these people and realizing, um, you know, you know, learning about them and learning how the landscape is, that's how Lucha Work came to be. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when did you like one, two, three? If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.